Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about 15 reasons why you could fail your PhD. PhD is demanding, full of challenges, full of milestones. Make sure that you don't make these mistakes and complete your PhD on time. But before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Vidhi Poddar. I'm an associate professor and you're listening to a series of talks which I've designed for you to understand your PhD process. So if you're ready, let's begin. The first reason why you may suffer in your PhD is because you have chosen a wrong topic a to or an old topic, topic that has been researched for quite some time. If you're selecting such a topic, you'll be finding it very difficult to come up with some innovative ideas or to publish those ideas in highly ranked and reputed journals. So try to try to work on topics that are really new and upcoming emerging cutting edge research areas that will make you that, that will have multiple benefits because it will help you to become a well known researcher in that field because it's a new area and there is no one out there. So you would be the first. And secondly, it will be easy to publish and your ideas would be uh, things that people would, would build more, more new things upon. The second reason why you may fail a PhD is because you don't treat your PhD as a full-time job. I suggest you should consider your PhD as a nine to five job. Start your PhD at work at nine o'clock in your lab, finish off by five o'clock. The next reason is you either aim too high or aim too low for your PhD. And that's not a good sign. And because you're not experienced in this at the moment, you should go and talk to your supervisor, share your ideas and see what the supervisor has to say. Do they think it is a reasonable uh, aim to be achieved in a PhD or is it just too much? I and mean, you may not be able to finish. So why? Uh, so this is where supervision uh, help, helps a lot. If you have someone to guide you at the right time to make that decision, it would be very helpful. So always keep in mind, don't aim too high for a PhD because you're not going to solve the world problem. You're going to solve a small piece in a big puzzle. The next reason why you may fail in your PhD is you're not listening to your supervisor. Keep in mind that there is the reason why you have a supervisor and a co-supervisor in your PhD program is because you can leverage upon their experience and their knowledge. Let them tell you or at least guide you of some of the things that they have learned and they have seen in the past and they want you to avoid. That is the reason to have a supervisor uh, to guide you in that process. And I have seen many of my students uh, sometimes not listening to me and then later they realize that oh yeah Vidi was right I should have listened to him so listen to your supervisor and you use, use their experience use their knowledge to build your PhD faster and a much better PhD another reason that that can affect your PhD and this is a bit sad because I feel if you do not get the right supervisor if you if you do not if you cannot uh, gel or cannot work very well with your supervisor it is going to affect your PhD and I have seen many students uh, who, are, who are in this situation I think picking your right supervisor is the is one of the critical things that you should uh, you should keep keep in mind also remember that it is, it is okay to change your supervisor it is it's not that once you have selected a supervisor you cannot change uh, change them it is perfectly okay uh, if you decide to change just contact your whoever is your research coordinator in your school or in your university and explain them that I think I need I need to change my supervisory panel there should be a policy within your within your uh, university that will help you to do that so don't ever think that it is uh, next to impossible to change uh, changing a supervisor the sixth reason why I think you would fail your PhD is if you're not taking the initiative yourself. You're waiting for somebody else to come and tell you to do this or to do that. You are not self-motivated, not self-driven. Reason number seven, aiming for perfection. I mean, you can spend your entire life perfecting something and not, not complete it or not deliver it. But in a PhD, you only have three or four years. So make sure that even if you are a perfectionist, realize your boundaries and decide and understand that you have to, you have to finish it at some time. You can't just spend over and over trying to improve a particular piece of work. There has to be a deadline, a time when you want to submit. So make sure that you do that. Next in the list is poor project management. I have mentioned that in many of my other videos as well, that consider your PhD as a project and project manage your PhD. I mean, people have come up and designed 
project management methodologies, tools and techniques. These are out there for you to use for your PhD. You know, I mean, get those tools, build up a plan for the first year, second year and the third year. What is it that you're going to achieve and follow that plan? I mean, there's no point having a complete detailed project plan just for the sake of having it and not using it. So what's the point? Next in the list, poor time management. I mean, when I said you have to work nine to five, you really have to work nine to five. I mean, imagine you are being paid a scholarship and the scholarship is a kind of a salary that you're receiving for doing the job. And the job is to do your own PhD. So it's like two benefits you're getting. One is to uh, get your PhD as well as you're getting paid to do that. So you have to manage your time effectively. Also, many a times I tell my students, when you're in doing a PhD, you're actually preparing yourself to get a job at the end of the PhD. So how you utilize your time, what you do with your time depends upon what you will, what will happen in the end. I mean, if you are just doing PhD and not preparing yourself for the future job, you're losing time. And I feel the PhD time is the most beautiful time that you have in your, in your study because once you finish your PhD, you will not get that kind of an attentive time where you're just purely focusing on one, one bit of research. And I think that's the most memorable time of, of my PhD as well, or of my life as well, or my career. So realize the value of time. These three years, you have to use it to the best possible way, achieve the most that you can through this uh, exercise. So make sure that PhD is not just what getting a PhD, but it is also the time that you're going to use to prepare for the job after your PhD. Point number 10, not having a plan or not following a plan can also, is also a reason. Like I said, project management, project management, project management. Make sure that you consider your PhD as a project and in the end you have to deliver on that project. One thing that really uh, affects a lot of PhD students and I have seen this personally uh, is you kind of start to lose motivation when uh, within in your PhD process and that is the most difficult time and I think as a supervisor it is the supervisor duty of care to make sure that if he or she sees uh, their student losing motivation they come in intervene and make sure that they bring them back uh, back to that motivated state and passionate state so that they can continue with their PhD. All right, the next reason. Next reason is not publishing at all during your PhD. If you're listening to my video right now and if you haven't published, the one thing that I would want you to do is to publish at least one paper this year or in the next six months. Remember, writing and con consistently writing and publishing your research is very important, uh, very important for your, for your PhD. And there are multiple reasons for that. For example, imagine if you have completed your research, you are in the third year and you haven't written anything and you would have to write like 100,000 words in one year. It is going to be a daunting task. It's not easy to write, come up with 100,000 words. But if you have a regular publishing strategy, and this is what I tell my students as well, that you have to regularly publish. You publish once you have completed your candidacy or your presentation, you complete a paper after you've done your literature review and every every step, slowly and slowly, you build up, come up with a couple of papers a year. That is, that is sufficient, that is acceptable. If you can do more, even better. But have a publishing strategy in place. Many a times, the best ideas come when you're talking to somebody else, maybe over a coffee or over a tea break. Collaboration is critical in your PhD. You may not realize the value of it. You might think, oh, is this something, one more thing that I need to do? other than my PhD. But I think collaboration is integral part of your PhD. You have to do it. Some of the best ideas come up when you're talking to somebody else who is not in your field. They may look at your research or your research problem in a different way. That may give you some new ideas. So keep in mind, you need to collaborate with your colleagues or with a fellow PhD student. Another reason is you're taking too much time off. You know, you might have taken a leave, gone on a holiday, and once you come back from the holiday, you kind of lost your motivation. You're still in that holiday mood. You not come back to your PhD mood. That can really cause big problems. And I have seen students who suffer, have experienced that kind of a thing where they got back from a holiday and they're like, just can't get back into their normal PhD routine. Another reason why I see many people fail their PhD is starting the PhD for the wrong reason. I have seen many people, many students come to me and they say, I want to start my PhD. And the reason, and I ask them, 
why do you want your PhD now? What is what was the reason? What was the motivation for you to come right now? And many a times I receive the answer, which is come somewhat shocking, is I have lost my job. I have nothing else to do. I thought I might do a PhD. That's one of the worst reasons to start PhD because I have seen I've seen students like this. And once they've got a job, they leave. They struggle completing their PhD and it's just, just too sad to see them in such a situation. Finally, the last reason is if you can't handle stress. And I've made a complete video on how to handle stress. So make sure that you check that out because throughout your PhD, throughout those three to four years, you will experience a lot of stress. But if you follow the tips and tricks that I have mentioned in my video on stress management, you may you may have one of your most enjoyable PhDs. Okay, so these were my reasons why I think you may fail your PhD. So if you want to be successful and complete your PhD on time, do a self-assessment and see how many of the items you are currently experiencing. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you have learned something from this. And if you have done, Please do share this video with your friends. Subscribe to my channel. Till then, thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.